Now, we have to in some way address the elephant in the room, because as we all know, when Th Thomas Jefferson said that all men are created equal and have inalienable rights, he didn't in practice mean all men. As we all know, Thomas Jefferson and Washington and most of these guys owned slaves, and they sure as hell couldn't vote, and they had no rights to life, liberty, or the pursuit of happiness. And everything we know so far about John Locke would lead us to believe that he would be the fiercest opponent of slavery, wouldn't he? He believed that everyone had an original God-given property in his own person, his own body, and anything he laboured upon with that body was naturally and rightfully his. Did that apply to slaves? By definition, a slave doesn't have a right to liberty. In, in some colonial jurisdictions, slaves were afforded the right to life. It was illegal to kill them sometimes, and it was even sometimes a capital offense. And certainly to kill someone else's slave was you know, the, the destruction of valuable private property. That was a terrible thing to do to, to an English gentleman, to kill his slave. Um, but laws protecting slaves were almost never enforced, and slaveholders had not just a right, but in some ways a duty to discipline and punish their slaves. And if that meant accidentally killing, then, you know, that was perhaps bad slave management, but not illegal. There are lots of manuals written on slaveholding telling you about the need to take care of your slaves, just as a car manual will tell you that you need to take car, you know, take care of your car. So, you know, Locke was an, op uh, was an opponent of slavery then, wasn't he? Well, no. No, he wasn't. He was, he was quids in. He was, as I say, secretary to the Lord's proprietor of Carolina, and he, and he found a loophole. Again, rather conveniently. The Founding Fathers never even attempted to justify publicly what they were doing to these men and women on a daily basis. They were just plain hypocrites. But for, for Locke, as we may remember from the last video, he had a theory of just war. And in certain circumstances, it was right and necessary to go to war, and that meant killing people. And so in that circumstance, it was permissible to take a man's life, and so it was permissible to take his, his liberty. So voila. But just to conjecture for a minute here, I think that slavery and the, and the historical experience of slavery, the historical experience of enslaving people and trading them, was a big difference that separated 1651 from 1689, that separated Thomas Hobbes's time from John Locke's time. Between these two dates, the date of Leviathan and the date of uh, the two treatises, you get the birth of the English slave trade, and the experience made liberty more important in a way. For Hobbes, liberty was quite an abstract concept. It hadn't risen to its place as the preeminent political virtue in the way that it was, was you know, in the, in the way that it did in the Western world in his wake. But in, by Locke's time, many prominent people in English society had a clearer conception of liberty and what liberty meant because they'd seen the opposite very vividly. And the founding fathers of the United States had had that kind of experience. Liberty for them meant not being the guy who brought them their coffee in the morning. They, they said they wanted liberty for all men despite not granting it for their own slaves. Last time we looked at Hobbes and his notion that all men would be willing to place themselves at the mercy of one man, to place themselves in subjection to him because they knew that sovereign power was never as hurtful as the want of it. Any kind of subjection would always be better than civil war. But did he mean any kind of subjection? Well. Let's give this guy a say in this. This photo was taken in 1863, by which time the United States has, had descended into civil war, and it was a war, amongst other things, to free him and people like him. His, his name was Gordon. We don't know if that was his first or last name, or even if he had a last name, and he escaped from a plantation in Louisiana, and he made it across 
the battle lines to the north where he was free. And this photo of his scars from being whipped repeatedly was uh, was taken and, and mass produced and sent by lots of people, um, sent to lots of people by abolitionist cam campaign groups. And it was part of the propaganda for those who wanted to ban slavery and for the military cause of the North against the slave-holding South. And Gordon joined the war himself after the photo was taken and fought to free others. And the, and the Civil War was incredibly bloody. There had never been a war like it in terms of slaughter. But many in the US would say that the Civil War, Civil war was worth it. And he certainly would. He voted with his feet against the, the doctrines of Thomas Hobbes about absolutist power. He said, some wars are better than some states of subjection. 